Welcome to the channel Simplified. Today we will discuss compound interest and future value. Both are highly related terms. What is compound interest is best explained with an example. Let's say you gave a loan of 1000 rupees to your friend and he is planning to return it after 2 years. You are charging him 10% interest. In the first year the interest is 100 rupees which is 10% of 1000. Now in the second year If you charge the 10% only on the original amount of 1000 rupees it is called simple interest but instead if you take the 1100 which includes a 100 rupees interest for the first year and calculate 10% on this it is called compound interest so basically compound interest refers to the method of calculating interest in which you are charging interest on the interest This 1210 which includes the interest for 2 years is its future value after 2 years the amount what you get in future after factoring in the growth and whenever anyone says future value by default it assumes that the growth is compounded that's why the two terms are interlinked the formula to calculate future value with compound interest looks like this i'm not a big fan of formulas myself it makes me feel like So in this video I will explain to you how you can calculate compound interest or future value without formulas and without even using excel just by using a calculator The opposite of compounding is discounting If you learn this method for compounding you will be able to do discounting also easily without using formulas But before that I want you to get used to one concept the conversion of percentage to decimal format Normally this is how we write 6%. We can convert it to decimal format by dividing it by 100 or by shifting the decimal point two places to the left. So 6% becomes 0.06. So 7% will be 0.07 and 8.25% will be 0.0825. Remember you're shifting the decimal two places to the left. and 90% will be 0.9 and 9% will be 0.09 don't get confused in almost all interest rate based formulas you see r by 100 later when you calculate the interest rate you have to multiply by 100 if you get used to this conversion in your head you will always be able to skip this one step of dividing and multiplying and it will save you tons of time try to make a habit of always using decimal format for percentages going forward Now that we are done with this let's imagine you are giving a 1 rupee loan at 8% per annum 8% is 0.08 If we want 8% of 1 rupee we have to take 1 into 0.08 which is nothing but 0.08 This is the interest part principal is 1 The total outstanding amount at the end of year 1 will be 1 plus 0.08 which is 1.08 For the next year since we are taking compound interest the principal will become 1.08 which is including the interest the interest for this year will be 1.08 the now principal into 0.08 the total now will be 1.08 plus 1.08 into 0.08 we will not calculate this but we'll simplify the equation so we'll take the common factor out 1.08 and we'll get this equation as 1.08 into 1 plus 08 this is nothing but 1.08 into 1.08 which is 1.08 square so we have the future value for the second year if we want to calculate the same thing for the third year now the principal is 1.08 square the interest will be 1.08 square into 0.08 the total amount now is 1.08 square plus 1.08 square into 0.08 again we'll simplify this and it will become 1.08 to the power 3 to the power 3 means you have to multiply 1.08 with 1.08 3 times this final total is nothing but the future value so you see a clear pattern is emerging if you want future value for 1 year it is 1.08 For two years, it is 1.08 square. For three years, it is 1.08 cube. 
So if you want it for 5 years, it is 1.08 to the power 5 and 10 years will be 1.08 to the power 10. If you want future value for 5% interest and 20 years, it will be 1.05 to the power 20. 6% growth for 15 years, 1.06 to the power 15. It's quite simple. So the generic way to remember this is 1 point rate to the power year, where rate is in decimal format. Now all of this is for 1 rupee. What if we want to know for 10 rupees? We simply have to multiply this number by 10. If we want for 20 rupees, you multiply it by 20. If you want for 1 lakh rupees, you multiply by 1 lakh. This is easy to calculate on a calculator as well without needing to use pen, paper or equations. Let's try for 7.5% for 8 years. So on this calculator, you press 1.075. If you haven't got familiar with the decimal conversion yet, you will have to put 7.5 divide by 100 and you will get 0.075. Since you want it in one point format, you will have to add one. Okay, so you will now get 1.075. So if you can do that step in your head, you can skip all these steps. So directly you can type in 1.075. On a scientific calculator, you can press this button, which is for power. And then you press 8. So it will give you 1.78. Now the amount that we are trying to calculate is for 50,000 rupees. So you multiply it by 50,000. So this calculation hardly takes 3 to 5 seconds for me now. But if you only have a standard calculator, like most of the handheld calculators, you don't have the power button. You can then type 1.075 into equal to. When you do into equal to, it will multiply with itself. You get square. You hit equal to again without pressing anything else. You will get cube. So you can press again once more to get to the power 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now you have the answer for 1.075 to the power 8. Again, multiply with 50,000, which is the investment. And you have the future value with compound growth for 8 years. If you want to know how much is the interest that you earned alone, you can subtract the original amount of 50,000. So this is the interest that you earned. Somehow for me, this is far easier to remember than this formula. And I hope that there are others out there who will find this useful.